Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I am Muhammad Adnan and this is one of these old long pending videos as well because I made a video about how to use SQL stored procedure in Power BI desktop. So since previously it was not an option to use the stored procedure in Power BI service because we can't pass the parameters dynamically. So now with the help of these two blog posts from Chris Webb and as well as this Pro Logica, they have made an awesome blog post here. I am also going to add this post in the description of this video. You can just go and check out that video as well. Through this, we can add this stored procedure or SQL table functions in our Power BI report and then we can make use of these dynamic options here. If you look into this report, right now I just selected here categories and the report is now showing on the clothing. And here if I select on accessories, then it's going to refresh the data and this is backed by SQL Server connections and we'll get this refresh data in accessories. And now if I click on component for example, it's nothing, no data available over there and if I click on bikes, now we get this data. So now you may think about the same situation happened in the last video as well. It, is, it was working fine in Power BI desktop but not in Power BI service. So now let's go into Power BI service. I will open up this Power BI report which is dynamic inquiry parameter. Right now it is showing it for clothing and if I click on bikes, it's giving a bike here. If I click on accessories, it's giving me accessories total and if I click on components, it's giving me components. That's a good thing, right? It's working in Power BI desktop as well as in Power BI service. So to go into that in detail, if you are new to this channel, just hit the subscribe button. If you like this video till this part, please hit the like button as well. So coming back here to Power BI Desktop, there are few things which you need to do in few before looking into Power BI is first of all you need to configure these two options in your SQL Server that SP Configure Show Advanced Options 1 Reconfigure and then SP Configure Ad Hoc Distributed Queries equal to 1. So these two things which you need to enable first and after that you need to create stored procedures in your SQL Server or you can use the table function as well. So here I use the stored procedure because I like the stored procedure most. So create procedure, fact internet sales and then I am passing this category as a variable and after that I am just creating this view and then using this where condition category equal to add category. So if I want to just manually create pass this stored procedure in SQL Server, if I execute this one then I am going to get the list of bytes and then English product subcategory name and then English country name region name and then sales amount. So this is the value. If I just pass here some other values then it is going to show me those values here. Yeah, as simple as that. But now if I want to use it in Power BI desktop there are two things. One here we can make use of this composite model that um, mixed mode basically that we can use import as well as direct query. So the SQL server stored which is a direct query and the category list of category which is showing up here bikes, clothing, accessories that's actually an import mode. So that's an advantage we can make use of that. And even it can work beautifully if you have a kind of composite model that the data value, static value, import value is in Excel file and the SQL stored procedure in SQL server that also will work. So there are some prerequisites to work on that. Please go and watch this video till the end so that you can clearly understand how these things work. So first of all what I did is basically um, get data as usual from the SQL server and then I pass this manually about how we need to pass the connections here like execute this packed internet sales and then clothing. Basically if I just click on new and then SQL server it's going to load up here and you need to pass your server name, database name and then here server name and database name and let it this keep this to be direct query and in advanced options you need to just copy and paste this SQL stored procedure just to load this at the first time. Okay, so once this load in the first time, you need to go to advanced editor, which is click on this table and then click on advanced editor. Here you need to make some changes. So basically this was the one which is initially I tried just to load this information directly into Power BI. And now after this, you need to add, if you will compare these two versions, um, then both of them are fine, both of them are same and only here we need to add some additional steps. So here select instead of execute before adding up those value we need to add select star from hash 
bracket open bracket if close bracket open row set open bracket and then sql cli sql and ncli trusted connection is equal to yes after that we need to pass this stored procedure name execute and this basically i'm passing this database name as well dot dot and then the procedure name and after that we need to pass this to be dynamic so that's why i'm passing it uh, i mean i'm just connect closing this step the text step here and then this is basically the parameter which we need to create i will just show you how you can create the parameters um, and after that again we need to add these steps i will just add this particular step in the description of the video so that you can make use of that and finally you just need to use this create navigation property equal to false so these are the static thing which you need to follow then only it will work so so once you do so and then you can click on cancel and then if you want to create a parameter what you need to do is basically um just click on manage parameter on the top here and then you will get a pop up window where you need to create the parameters so here i just give a name as category and this should be required and this is a text field and suggested value can be any and the current value we need to pass which is bytes so that's why it is loading up the bytes value here so now we have created this category and added this uh, sql stored procedure as a direct query and finally we need to create a dim product category which is again coming from sql server but this is an import mode because when you are connecting to your sql server you are getting the option about whether you want to be an import mode or direct query so here i selected to be an import mode for this particular category table so now i have the list of bikes and uh, category key i removed all the other unnecessary columns so once i click on apply and close so you need to go here on to power bi desktop in the data model side model view so in the model view if you just notice one thing is this is on the blue bar and this is no bars here so blue bar is basically connect refers to the direct query mode and then you get list of available tables inside to this and here also you will get the list of tables but if you notice one thing there is a small question mark here for this particular column the reason for this is you need to select this master table which is dim product category and then on the right side you have this property pane if you scroll down to the bottom of this pane you have advanced options and once you click on advanced options you will get few options and here you have about pain to parameter so here by default it will be none and now you need to click on category this category is basically the parameter which we created in power query right just a few minutes back it's the same thing which you need to select here the category so this parameter basically what happens is you are selecting this master table and then binding to this parameter and that parameter is actually mapped into the sql server stored procedure on that query right so that's the reason it's going to go from master to parameter and from parameter it will go to this stored procedure so after doing that we don't need to make any kind of relationship between these two table because that will act as a kind of separate table because it has to pass the parameter to this stored procedure so by doing that step if you click on here clothing then it's going to filter pass this value to the sql server uh, to the parameter and from parameter it goes to the stored procedure and the stored procedure is direct query so it is rendering those value and bringing it back into power bi here yeah. so it's the same thing so you click here and then that's it now one more thing which you want to notice again is basically if you go to the power bi service and it is also working fine so for this you need a power bi gateway in order to work the direct query mode and refresh of the static table so that's one thing another thing if we just go back to the setting of this data set which is dynamic uh, m query parameter i will just go to data source here and in the connections i set up is i have set up this uh, gateway connections for this to refresh the data that's the usual thing and after that this data source credentials as we have created the parameters in power bi desktop right if i click here then it's actually giving me the value of the category the bytes which is the default value which i set up in power bi desktop so we don't need to make any changes on this particular area because that's going to be a static value um anyway but we are going to use the same thing in power bi user interaction way so that's the really important useful features about we can use dynamic m query parameters using a stored procedure and this gives a flexibility that we don't need to load all the data uh, we can just give the control to the user whether what they want to see they can just filter it out using the information yeah that's it so if you like this video 
useful that please hit the like button if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications but make sure you turn on the notification on your devices share it with your friends and colleagues if you have any queries and feedback just post it on the comment section below thanks for watching keep learning see you in the next video